Good evening and welcome to this future of policing task recording in progress public forum. My name is Carolyn Calloway Thomas and I am the chair of the task force. In May 2021, the future of policing task force was named to review and make recommendations about law enforcement in Bloomington and Monroe County. The future of policing task force is a result of the work the city of Bloomington has been doing with the Divided Communities Project at the Moritz School of Law of Ohio State University. In order to achieve greater racial equity in the city. At the end of our work, the task force will submit recommendations on what the community feels the policing in our community could and should be. This forum is a continuation of the research the task force is doing by conducting focus groups with various organizations throughout Bloomington and Monroe County to better understand the feelings, experiences, and perceptions that Bloomington Monroe County residents have regarding law enforcement. In order to make the process as accessible as possible, this forum is open to anyone, regardless of his or her affiliation with a particular organization. We are delighted that you are here. So once again, thank you for your presence this evening. Now I would like to introduce Garfield Warren, co-chair of the task force, who will go over our ground rules and process for the evening. All right. Thank you, Carolyn. In this session, we would like for everyone to participate as they feel comfortable. As you know, we are conducting this focus group session on behalf of the Future of Policing Task Force. There are no wrong or right answers. Please feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, and experiences. This session is being recorded for accuracy in capturing what you say. In submitting our report to the larger community, rest assured we will not identify, uh, we will not identify and your opinions will remain anonymous. Each participant will have two to three minutes to speak. This is to ensure that all attendees who wish to speak have an opportunity to do so. We have a timekeeper that will notify you when your time is up. After all attendees have been given one chance to speak, previous speakers will have an opportunity to speak again, should they desire to do so. We are providing a link to a form for participants to provide additional feedback. So please fill out the form, especially if you did not have a chance to speak this evening or prefer not to speak to the group. We are grateful for your attendance this evening. Our moderators for this focus group are Ame Jocelyn and Malik McCluskey. They are members of the task force. I will now turn it over to them to begin our focus group questions. Thank you. Thank you, Garfield. Uh, I, we're going to start off with our first question. The first question that we would like to um, uh, for you to think about are, what are your experiences with law enforcement in our community? And when did these experiences take place? And if you know the law enforcement agency that this uh, experience occurred with, if you could identify them. And so we'll open up for, for responses. Hello, I, I, I'll go first, I guess. Um, my name is Valence Hayes and I am a, uh, can you all see me, hear me? We can hear you. Um, can you see me though? No, yes, no, see I can you. see you. Thank okay. you. Yeah. You're welcome. So my name is Valence Hayes 
and I am a relatively new uh, community member here in Bloomington, Indiana. And I've had a couple of experiences with uh, the Bloomington Police Department um, and here recently more with uh, different levels like detectives and the prosecutor and different things like that. And initially with the, uh, with the officers, it's not, it's not, it wasn't a very good experience on any occasion. Um, it wasn't a very ex a good experience. At one point, um, my son had been jumped on like by five officers in handcuffs who thought that he was um, an adult. And uh, when reported to the police, uh, chief of police, nothing was done about it. So that was, that was very disappointing. Um, but here recently, I've been able uh, to be in contact with uh, more detectives uh, that are that do um, you know more crime work, not just you know regular day to day um, police calls or or traffic stops, but they have been more more helpful and more um, caring and understanding. Thank you. Would you like to add more about the? those differences between what caring and understanding looks like? Um, I think, um, okay, for the, in my opinion with the police department here in um, Bloomington, from my perspective, especially um, in the more black, saturated black communities, um, that they aren't, I don't think they're very uh, well equipped for, you know, the different, the different um, um, backgrounds that are coming into Bloomington. So they may be used to dealing with a lot of the IU students, um, some rel relatively uh, people with addictions and mental health, but it's more a rougher crowd coming down here. And I don't think they know how to deal with them. And I'm, I think they're a little bit scared too. Um, Cause at one point, I think I even saw an officer, a new officer that was hesitant to get out the car at a call. Um, and so, you know, so of course, a lot of people be like, oh, well, what's the use of calling police? They ain't going to do nothing anyways. Or then you have some that think that they could just get over on the police and they have no respect for them. Um, and then the police, they, you know, they, they really don't care. They're not engaging. Um, and it's more so shut up and, and tell me this or, you know, that versus, you know, talking to someone like their person. Um, that's, that's been my experience with just the, the officers. I don't think I have I had one good experience with an officer with uh, Bloomington PD. But as far as like the detectives, I've, um, they're very caring. The, and for, for, as far as what I can see, um, I want, well, yeah, caring. They, and um, a, a recent issue, I thought that maybe they weren't listening, but I, I found out that they were listening. They just were doing their, I guess their detective work. And so it was, um, you know, it, it was comforting to find out that, that when I, I did talk to them, that they were listening and I saw that through the actions that were made. So that was comforting to know that they were actually listening. And I actually got to talk to the, uh, the prosecutor today, Jeff Kern, I, I believe, I believe that's his name. Kerr, I just, let's say Kerr because I'm pretty sure it's Kerr, but uh, he took the time to speak to me, to me today and, um, you know, he, he listened. So he didn't like brush me off or anything like that. So again, that was comforting to, to know that he actually took the time to listen to me. And that's it. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Are there others that may want to share? Hi, I will. Um, my name is Jim Shelton. I've lived here since 71. Have had uh, a number of interactions with the police, mostly traffic. Uh, they've been very professional. As you can see, I'm a white, old white guy, so that might be why, but I've had no uh, negative uh, interactions with them. And then for the last nine and a half years, I've been a CASA, and uh, in every case, the parents of the children uh, who are in the court system for being abused or neglected. The parents have been involved in the criminal justice system. And I have had uh, indirect uh, 
experience with a number of police on uh, these cases. Usually there's drugs involved, but there's also been uh, violence involved. And the police have, have, as far as I've been able to tell, have been very caring and have been doing their best, especially with the violence to protect the person who is, uh, who is usually the female who is being subjected to the violence. So that's pretty limited, but uh, it is the experience that I've had. The, the traffic things were mostly probably 20 years ago. Now that I'm older, I don't uh, get into so much traffic trouble, but uh, the, the uh, criminal stuff has been, like I said, in the last nine and a half years. Well, that's all I got to say. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. I'll uh, like, jump in so here. Here we go. Uh, and this wasn't in Bloomington, but I, I think it might be a good example of maybe a situation that you might be interested in hearing about. Uh, I was in a small town fairly close to Bloomington, about 30 miles away. Um, and um, I had been to a, a work party. We had a retirement party for a guy that worked for me that... Um, was retiring and we had a real nice time and everything and as, as I'm leaving town um, I got pulled over by the police and um, they said that I'd made an illegal turn and um, they did a sobriety test on me which I hadn't been drinking um, and uh, it was a it was a no alcohol party and um, so pulled me over well what it broke down to was it was a case of mistaken identity. Evidently, somebody the day before had been raising a fuss at the courthouse and um, drove the same kind of car as I did. And so this police officer saw me driving the car and mistook me for the other person and uh, pulled me over, pushed me around a lot, choked me, held me back over the hood of my car. And then another officer came and saved my butt, basically and told him that, um, that I wasn't the guy. So that was my experience, uh, kind of like the previous person, you know, um, you know, if my race was different or something along that line, it could have been a whole lot more serious situation. Um, and so uh, just wanted to share that. That's my experience with it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other experiences? You can just unmute and, and share those experiences with us, or if you want to raise your hand um, or type it in a chat too, you can um, send that message as well. And you'll notice in the um, chat, there's also a link. So if you're here and you want to listen, but you don't want to share in front of um, other people, we have um, a link that you can fill out a form with all four of the questions that we're going to ask tonight. And it's an anonymous form as well. So we don't collect um, your name or, or any of that other identifying information. Should we move on to the next question? Yes, okay. So 
our second question this evening, and all these questions will be uh, sort of broad, but that's just to uh, give opportunity for you to comment and uh, talk about your own particular experiences. But our second question is, what is your perception of the current role of law enforcement in our community? And I'll repeat, what is your perception of the current role of law enforcement in our community? Okay, I'll go first again. My perception of law enforcement and and I can only really speak from um you know the black community um because not necessarily that I'm having the interactions with the law enforcement but um I'm usually I'm usually called upon when someone is interacting with the law enforcement because I'm really good at you know with communicating with law enforcement um most people are, aren't really comfortable with you know communicating or get scared um when dealing with them but um, for from an outside looking in, um, for instance, I have someone who uh, was being harassed by uh, a neighbor and she didn't want to get put out. She didn't want to respond to the threats of the neighbor putting feces on her door, um, just being very threatening. Um, it, 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 it took about five or six, seven phone calls for uh, Bloomington Police Department to actually do something. And this is when she actually put her hands on the young lady and she physically made her, you know, she fought her and made her lose her, her unborn child. Did they only arrest her? Um, they, they arrested her that night. I think they could take things a little bit more seriously. Um, it, it appears that they, it, for some reason, that they, it's, it's not a lot of caring. Um, when it comes to the uh, police department, they're not active. Like, and that's another thing. I rarely see, I rarely see the a police car the, or the a police presence unless I hear gunshot fires. And then they, they'll all come, they'll all come swarming around, um, you know, flashing their lights. But then they'll disappear again. But I don't see the the presence of of Bloomington um, Police Department at all. It's um uh in the community, you know. I, I think I think maybe once an officer was around me and they gave my child a bear when he got off the school bus, but I don't see them very active in the community. They only show up when there's a crime, and then it, it appears that they don't actually do anything about the crime. So I don't think they're they're very active in the community, not in the black community, anyways. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Ms. Hayes. What other thoughts do you have about the perception of law enforcement in our community? And this can be any law enforcement agency. We have multiple agencies within our community, Monroe County Dep Sheriff's Department, Bloomington Police Department, IU Police Department, the state police um, that are on our highways. Was that question geared towards me or you were just asking? Oh, if you have more to share. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I just want to share more. <laughs> Uh, I no, I just want to make sure you just wasn't directly sent it to me, but no, I'll let someone else share. Thank you. Well, I'll throw something out there. Uh, I think the the common slogan is to serve and protect, and I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, you know, I would like to see um, in my children, my, my youngest one's 34, you know, so uh, not that, uh, but, but I would like to see uh, more outreach from the police department. Um, 
and um, I, I personally, I think we have a pretty good police department compared to some that I've seen in other places that I've lived. Um, but uh, I, I would just like to see, uh, um, like I said, a little more outreach. Although I know that uh, that the police department has added some more resource officers in the last year or so, which is a good thing. I think uh, I haven't had any personal contact with the um, with these folks, but um, just the idea of it sounds pretty good. And. Um, no, that's all I can think of right now. Just serve and protect and, um, um, you know, reaching out to uh, younger folks that are uh, growing up and making sure that, that they have a positive opinion of police officers. And that's it. Thank you for sharing that. Well, hi, I'll go again. Uh, I think our uh, law enforcement community, especially in the city of Bloomington, is very professional, is very good. I think they're uh, very understaffed, underpaid, and very overworked. I am concerned that, uh, well, that we will lose more of them. Uh, and I'm concerned that they'll make mistakes because they've had to work two shifts in a row. I worry uh, the stress on their families. I can't imagine when our son was young that uh, I would have called my wife and said, hey, I'm not coming home tonight. I'll, you'll have to take our son to his ball game or whatever, because I've got to work another shift. And that happening over and over is uh, probably why a lot of them are leaving our community. So I think they do a good job. Uh, I think we need more of them. and. Uh, and or if we can take some of the things that they have to do off of them where it makes sense and we can make it work, that would be a good thing too. But I think right now the whole system is, is being severely stressed and uh, we're fraying a little bit at the edges. If I can say something um, to piggyback off of Jim, um, I was talking to the, the board, um, the chair of the, the social status, status of Black Males um, Commission meeting. And um, I, I agree with Jim, like if, if there was maybe more people in the community who could like help do some of the policing because um, the police are, you know, understaffed and overworked, um, you know, just to help, you know, keep the community more safer. I know there's been a, a lot of shootings um, down here in Bloomington. And one of the re main reasons why I came to Bloomington is to get away from shootings um, from the far east side of Indianapolis. Um, and But I, I see a lot of people come down here from the different cities. And so um, I, I think that's something that maybe the Bloomington Police Department is not even ready for. Um, but if they had some people that were in, already in the community, um, we're knowledgeable of some of people in the community that, you know, they could, you know, do some police. I don't, I'm not for sure. Whatever a person could do with, um, you know, with the um, extent of the law. I know Mayor, Mayor Hossett was talking about um, peacekeepers to have them in Indianapolis to, to help with some of that, um, the issues that's going on in the community and especially in the black community. There's not a lot of black police officers. I think I've I seen one my whole three years I've been down here and I just met one black detective last week. So um, maybe if they were more black people, that, you know, people that look like the black people in the community, they will, you know, be more um, receptive of, you know, of the police because pe people like to be respectful, but a lot of black people are, are, are so scared um, of police and I can understand why but they need to know that they, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. And so when it's tension like that, it, it creates tension on both the community and the police. And so we can just, you know, help, you know, help, um, help with that. Like Jim was talking about, you know, maybe the community getting more involved. I think that will help out tremendously. And I do like the fact that I did see the, the social workers um, helping with the police calls. So I did, I seen that on the news or something the other day. I thought that was awesome. 
And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Maybe we'll move on to the um, third question. And of course you can answer any of the previous questions or combine your, you know, your answers or your responses to any of these questions that we've posed so far. So the third question is, what do you think should be the future role of law enforcement in our community? And some of you have already touched on some ideas that you have, and we would love to hear more about these ideas that you might have um, for the future role of law enforcement in Bloomington and Monroe County. Well, I'll start this time since I'm not shy. Uh, I, I think that ideally, we need to have some other emergency responding entity that deals with the things that do not require a sworn armed officer. The problem I see is identifying which things are in which bucket, if you will. And then the thing that concerns me is sometimes you're going to, they'll get a call and you think it's, well, I'll give you a perfect example off of one of my Costa cases, domestic disturbance, going back between a wife and a husband, an ex-husband and a boyfriend. <clears throat> so you might send out a social worker, but by the time the force got there, there had been a fight during which somebody had been in the head with a hit in the head with a hammer. And uh, it turned into uh, a physical altercation to get the person under control and in the police car. So, and I know I, I've heard that uh, some communities, I guess I hear about, I don't know, is it Portland or someplace out there where uh, they figured this out, but uh, that is something that, that needs to be figured out before we can move to wholesale sending uh, social workers to some calls and, uh, police to other calls. Maybe they need to both go, uh, I don't know, but, or maybe the, the police go first and call, but it's something that's gonna have to be thought about carefully or we're gonna have a tragedy one day. So, but I, I do think the future, I, and I hope the future would be to somehow we, we distinguish between those two kind of things and get the people there that are trained to deal with that situation. Because I think the police would agree they're not trained to deal with a lot of the things that uh, perhaps the social worker might be. And yet when you call 911, I think Judge Decoff pointed out somewhere early in this discussion a few years ago, they get the call, they have to respond. So we need somebody else taking the call and it needs to be the right somebody else. Thanks. Thank you for that. All of your comments are really um, helpful and supportive to us and our task force as we make recommendations to the city about what the future of policing should look like in Bloomington and Monroe County. So um, these are really important public forums for us to uh, understand what the community would like to see. So we welcome any, any additional comments. Okay, I'll piggyback off of Jim again. Um, and in retrospect to um, him saying, when the police call is made or the emergency call is made or the call is made to the police officer, um, maybe 
having um, categories to see like, okay, so this is maybe a, a, a rape, a rape or um, a rape call, or maybe it's a, a gang, maybe gang affiliation or, or something to, to that nature going on. And then, or maybe like it's a domestic dispute, you know, something like that going on. And then you have maybe, you know, war forbid, but something of a higher, a higher, more serious crime that you do need the police, like real police on it. Like it has to be police there. So um, having those different categories um, and with the community's help, um, finding what type of agency or what type of person or, or what type of, um, you know, how can you formulate um, the group to fit the call, the, the different needs in the community, whichever whichever needs are, the calls are more prevalent and, and figure out that way too. So if you have like, um, I, I seen, I was looking at the statistics of uh, Monroe County last night. And I know like um, there's a lot of juveniles who get locked up for armed robbery. So um, like, you know, maybe you have a certain a certain person. This is what they deal with it, and they become an expert. They become an expert in in that particular area, and then so when they have a problem, then they dispatch that person to it. I think a, another another good thing would be is um, in certain communities that that the face is present. Like I was I was talking about earlier, I don't see a lot of uh, Bloomington police cars. Actually, when I got here, Bloomington police cars sounds so much different than Indianapolis. I'm like, what is that noise? I didn't know what it was. And I rarely hear it. Um, and it was like little space cars. So it was, it was different to me. But I'm starting to see them a lot since I moved from the south side over here near the Crestmont area. I see them a lot more. Um, but the people or the community partners who who actually are going to be helping the police, if, if that may be something that the task force, com the task force comes up with, that they are more present in the community. So maybe the community sees the, these faces or these people outside of you know an emergency. So, uh, and they're more comfortable with talking to these people. They're more comfortable with coming to these people with what's going on. And then maybe the crime or, you know, or, or different things can, can come down instead of rising up because they have someone, a trusted person to talk to. Um, and then not just be like just the police, but different, you know, different um, resources or, or help or however that will look. I'm not for sure how it will look, but not just the police. And that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other responses before we go to the fourth question this evening? I want to give ample time for community input. This is their opportunity to share your experiences, both pro and con. As you know, as uh, we stated early, um, there are no right answers. So we just want to get a feel for the community's experience. So before we move on to the next question, I want to make sure we have ample opportunity to answer this one or any of the questions we've had this, this far. We've got a, a state in the chat. To, if we could show the first um, two questions again. Question one and two.
So question one, what are your experiences with law enforcement in our community? When did these experiences take place? And if you know the law enforcement agency that you had this experience with, if you could name them. That's our first question. And our second question, what is the perception of the current role of law enforcement in our community? What is your perception? There aren't any further questions, or further answers on this question. Maybe we'll go to our fourth question and um, see if there's uh, responses here. But our fourth question this evening is, how can the city increase your feelings of safety within your community? How can the city, city of Bloomington, increase your feelings of safety within your community? Hey, I'll, I'll go again. I'll go first. Um, okay, so I don't think that the city can, the city itself can increase, do what needs to be done to increase the safety in my community because um, the city doesn't look like me. Um, I, I strongly believe that um, only like, only black people, black people, people that look like me are going to be able to most help the people in my community. I think that um, the city can be supportive, you know, supportive and help with resources um, and also want to help keep the community safer. But initially, when it comes to Black people, that's something that Black people are going to have to do. Um, you know, it's, you know, essentially, Black people are going to have to do it um, as a community as a whole. Sometimes, it's, it's, but it's going to have to take somebody who's going to stand up and do it. Um, but I don't think with the city itself, it's not going to do it. It's not, it's not a very good relationship there. It's not, a, it's hardly no rapport there. Like people do not want to talk to the police. They do not want to um, go report anything like of importance because um, they don't trust police or they think that the police don't care. But I do think that the community, I mean, the city has resources. Um, and there are, I believe there are people out there that want to, you know, that they, they, they don't want to see people you know, get in trouble and or, or dying. I know me, I don't want to see anybody die. Um, I don't, I would like to see for people to, you know, get along and, and be happy and, you know, live life and, you know, you know, progress in life instead of be stagnant. I would like, I would love to see that. But the truth of the matter is, especially in the black community, the low income community, people, they don't, they don't, they just don't have that type of hope, especially uh, by themselves. They, they need some motivation. And um, if the city really wants to help, then the city needs to um, find or uh, recruit other black people to, to get that done or it's not gonna get done. Not how they, I mean, not how they would, you know, try to, you know, perceive it. Cause I sit, I sit on the, the, the uh, commission for the uh, status of black males. And yes, we put on programming, you know, people show up, but are these things changing in the community? Are they changing at home? Are they changing with the kids in school? Are they? Um, not so much. It may appear to look like that. They may make the numbers look like that, but in reality, it's, it's, it's some stuff still going on. It needs to be addressed. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. You're welcome.
if you're just um, arriving, um, there is a link in the chat for a form that you can fill out that's anonymous that you can um, provide any responses that you have uh, to these four questions that we've posed tonight about your perceptions and experiences with our uh, the variety of law enforcement agencies in our community, the, the way that you see the future of policing and how you define safety and what you think the city can do to increase your sense of safety, your personal safety or um, the safety of your whole groups, communities or neighborhoods. So I'm just going to make a comment here, and um, it seems to me that this is a lot about retention and relationship building. And so retention, I feel like, and I appreciate this task force, I was so glad to see this, and I'm so glad that this is an open forum, but I'm wondering, and I'm sure you have, but ask, you know, go ask the police officers what they need, what they want to stay on the police force, right? And then also build relationships with the community. So we see you, so we see police, you know, law enforcement out in the community, just making relationships, not arrests, not sanctions, you know, just doing things. And I know that takes person power and, you know, that's very short right now. Um, so my first thing is talk about retention with the people that are still there. What do they need to, what do, what do they need to still stay there? Right. And then, you know, establish relationships with the community and also, uh, like somebody was saying, as far as representation, yeah, huge. So let's start in the schools. So I would like to see the police, the law enforcement, you know, that's in this community have a good relationship with MCCSC, with the board who makes all the rules, as we know, and uh, get, uh, start establishing those relationships there. Thank you. Thank you. We've been conducting small focus groups within the community. So if anyone here tonight is interested in inviting us to your neighborhood association or, um, or another group that you belong to, uh, we would um, be very interested in that to get more feedback from more community members. You can reach out to us for that as well. Are there additional comments, observations, insights that you would like to make this evening? Uh, we trust that we have given you ample opportunity to have your say this evening. Uh, as has been stated, we are holding these future policing task force events primarily because we want to hear your voice. We wanna hear what you have to say because we will be writing recommendations and we want 
the recommendations to reflect your interests and your comments. So I will pause once again to ask whether all of you assembled here this evening have had an opportunity to express your views. I presume not. So thank you for joining us. Uh, your opinions are very, very critical uh, to this process. So if you have additional comments that you would like to make that you did not have a chance to make this evening, please remember you can submit your questions to the address in front of you, www.10yurl.com FPTF form. We look forward to uh, receiving your thoughts and your expressions and your views. So please help us out by submitting your form to us. We invite you to stay safe and have a good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Bye-bye.